our world is transforming. Earth's climate is rapidly changing and the globe is warming up, a term often referred to as global warming. Although global warming affects the entire planet, it is felt more acutely by the ice-covered polar regions around the North and South Poles. In the Northern Hemisphere, the Arctic, icy regions are within an area called the Arctic Circle. The majority of the Arctic region is ocean surrounded by land masses, which supports an array of plants, animals, and a population of almost 4 million people. The Arctic has experienced the most rapid rate of warming on Earth, with dramatic effects including the retreat of glaciers, melting ice caps, shrinking ice sheets, and extensive permafrost loss, having both local and global implications. Such effects are predicted to cause considerate sea level rise, changes in the salinity of our oceans, and altered ecosystem feedback loops that will warm the Arctic even faster. In the Southern Hemisphere, Antarctica, Icy regions are within an area called the Antarctic Convergence. This continent is covered by permanent ice, distributed over two major ice sheets, the West Antarctic and the East Antarctic. With a climate much colder than that of the Arctic, there are no permanent human residents, and only organisms that are well adapted to the cold can contend with Antarctica's harsh terrestrial conditions. West Antarctica has warmed significantly over the last few decades, with sea ice extent over the northwestern peninsula undergoing rapid decline. If the Antarctic sheet were to melt completely, worldwide sea levels would rise more than 60 metres, a serious concern given that just a metre of sea level rise is sufficient to threaten many of the world's coastal habitats and human settlements. Changes in the polar regions will not only affect local people and ecosystems, but the rest of the world too, as they play such a crucial role in the regulation of global climate. Perceptions that climate change isn't real because the effects cannot always be seen or felt are only adding to the misfortune of those who are suffering the consequences the most, which, for many cases, are also those who contribute the least to global warming. Out of sight should not mean out of mind. As global warming increases, so too does the plight of the wonderfully varied species living within these vulnerable regions. The Arctic sea ice that polar bears rely on to hunt and give birth on is disappearing beneath them, and despite their incredible ability to swim, they are struggling to cover the increasing open water distances between land and ice without becoming stranded or drowning. Survival of mothers and cubs depends on the mother's hunting success which directly relies on the stability and extent of sea ice. Less winter ice forces female polar bears to go longer without food, impacting their fat stores and, in turn, their reproductive success. There is no doubt that the polar bear is under threat. Scientists predict that they will become extinct over much of their current range within 50 years if nothing changes for the better. But it's not just the polar bears that are suffering. Many species of seabirds are negatively impacted by the decline of sea ice and subsequent changes to their habitats and feeding sites. Major declines have already been observed in ivory gull populations in the north. A number of different species of seal living in both the Arctic and Antarctica are ice dependent, relying entirely on the presence of sea ice to survive. The ice not only provides a home, but a resting, birthing, nursing and feeding ground for the seals. However, thinning of the ice is causing pups to be separated from their mothers and limiting their chances of survival. Such is the case for penguins in the south, including the Gen 2, the Adeli, and the Emperor penguins, which also live associated with sea ice all year round. Penguins require sufficient snow cover and pebbles to construct lairs as well as stable sea ice in the spring to successfully rear their young. Earlier ice breakup can result in premature separation of mothers and their chicks, leading to higher mortality rates. Tiny Antarctic krill may be small, but they represent a giant-sized link in the food chain, as they are a vital food source for many marine animals and are responsible for supporting a huge amount of polar life. However, the microscopic ice algae called plankton that krill feed on are disappearing due to changing sea temperatures and loss of habitat, the sea ice, causing a cascade through higher trophic levels in the food web. 
Given a complete removal of sea ice, we are likely to expect extinction of those species that currently rely on it for survival, including several species of fish, penguins, seals, and whales. So why all this damage and suffering? Human activities have been recognised as significant causes of recent climate change. Growing populations of people, the combustion of fossil fuels in cars, factories and electricity production, deforestation and methane release from landfills all contribute to global warming. If we don't reduce greenhouse gas emissions, the Earth could get even hotter, causing severe weather, including tropical storms, heat waves, droughts, melting polar ice caps, and rising sea levels. How will our planet ever recover, or even survive? The fate of the world is in our hands. We must reduce global warming now, before it's too late. Our Earth needs us. We need our Earth. Let's help save it. The Pole to Pole campaign aims to do exactly this. The European Association of Zoos and Aquaria will, together with Arctic action teams, raise awareness to stimulate behaviour change, the conservation and biodiversity of the two poles. So how can you help? Helping is easy. All you have to do is unplug at least one of your electronic devices when they are not in use. This could be pulling out the plug once your mobile phone or tablet has finished charging. And switching your TV or games console off at the wall, rather than leaving it on standby. Because leaving appliances in standby mode consumes a significant amount of energy. Of course, there are other ways you could help too. Reduce what you use, reuse what's reusable, and recycle whatever you can. Drive less, walk or ride a bike to work or school instead. Use less energy around the house, such as heating, air conditioning and hot water. Use an aero to dry your clothes instead of a tumble dryer. And use energy efficient products and light bulbs, as this will not only help save energy in the environment, but will also save you money. And plant a tree or some plants, as they absorb the heat trapping greenhouse gas, carbon dioxide, and give off oxygen. However you help towards reducing global warming, don't forget to encourage others to get involved too. So don't delay. Pledge to pull the plug today and start saving the world. <laughs>